bit to the daybell case. Uh, I decide to go out to dinner with my family, and boom, breaking news happens. Breaking news. I'm uh, kind of hanging out, waiting to make sure I see that people are here, sort of what I always do. <sighs> Guys, I really did. I walked in the door, and I saw some statements. Uh, I have statements here from Rachel, Rachel Smith, the prosecutor in the Daybell case, and Rob Wood, Madison County prosecuting attorney. Hello. Okay. Right, Shelly? So crazy. Hello, everyone. Hello, Moon, Macy, Danielle, Misty, Stephanie May. Thanks for being here, Marcy. All right. Let's just process this together because the news came out a bit ago in the last hour. And like I said, I was away, have enjoying dinner, uh, classic breaking news scenario. And my phone is blowing up, unbeknownst to me. And I have, again, statements here from prosecuting attorney Rob Wood, as well as, uh, guys, so much, so much is going on. Uh, Rachel Smith is essentially, not essentially, Rachel Smith is leaving the Chad Daybell case. Rachel Smith has been a prosecuting attorney from Missouri on this case since March of 2021. So it'll be almost three years. She is going to stay on until the end of this month. So it's February 1st. I'm not surprised that they let this news happen on February 1st. Uh, who knows how long they've known, but she will at the end of this month, February 28th, be done uh, as a prosecutor on the Chad Daybell case. Pretty wild because Chad Daybell's case is set for April 1st. Jury selection will begin in Ada County, Boise, Idaho, for Chad Daybell, same place as Lori Vallow's trial was. Uh, so for Chad Daybell's trial, jury selection begins April 1st. And um, Rachel Smith will end her time as a prosecutor on February 28th, one month one month before Chad Daybell's trial begins. I don't have any great speculation for y'all today What I as to why, but I did reach out to some people and I have statements here from both Rachel Smith and Rob Wood. Again, Rob Wood is the Madison County prosecuting attorney who's going to stay on the case. Um, so, so let me tell you what I have. Uh, let's start with a statement from Rachel Smith. Um, she sent this statement to me and to us at Hidden True Crime. So she states, it has been a true honor to help pursue justice for Tylee Ryan, J.J. Vallow, and Tammy Daybell over the last three years. I am proud to have been part of the state of Idaho's efforts that led to the conviction of Lori Vallow Daybell in 2023. I was at that trial. She did so much during that trial. I want to say she she, did, she played a very important part of that trial. I have spent the vast majority of my legal career as a prosecutor. To have the opportunity to utilize my experience as a homicide prosecutor to help bring some comfort to the victim's families is something I will cherish for a lifetime. I appreciate the opportunity to work with Madison County Prosecuting Attorney Rob Wood and his team as they led the prosecution of the Lori Vallow Daybell case. My work on behalf of the state of Idaho on the Daybell matter is expected to end on February 28, 2024. As the Fremont County Prosecuting Attorney's Office leads the prosecution of Chad Daybell for charges connected to the deaths of Tylee, JJ, and Tammy, I wish them the very best of luck in the pursuit of justice. Uh, I want to read something here. To have the opportunity to utilize my experience as a homicide prosecutor to help bring some comfort to the victim's families is something I will cherish for a lifetime. But then she also states that she has spent the vast majority of my legal career as a prosecutor. This is, this is uh, true. She is a veteran homicide uh, prosecutor and was actually brought in from the state of Idaho. She is out of state. She is the one prosecutor that is not from the state of Idaho. They brought her in in March of 2021. So again, it's been nearly three years because Idaho doesn't typically see cases like this, of this magnitude, of this, 
I was a reporter in actually East Idaho in that area. Uh, I think I covered two homicides the two years I was there. Um, and one was a bar fight. It, it's <clears throat> not to minimize it, but, but to have a religious cult and a mass killing spree, like Idaho doesn't see cases like this, of, of this magnitude of this complexity. So uh, it, it is interesting that it's one month before Chad Daybell's um, trial begins. You know, we've waited this long. Uh, let me read you Rob Wood's statement uh, that was sent to me. And then from there, we'll talk about, um, from there, we'll talk about, I, I do have one idea. I do have one speculation. Um, I'll share my thoughts. And I don't know if, if Vicki Hoban is here, our dear friend Vicki Hoban, but, uh, Vicki, I, I, it, I forgot to ask if there's any statement you would want to make tonight too. I, I want some people to know. I've, I've asked some people for some statements and um, Vicky, my dear friend, if you're out there, you know that I know and, and I'm thinking of you. Justice for Tammy. For those of you that know Vicky Hoban, she, she has been on our channel a few times. If you're out there, Aunt Vicky is your name. Let us know. All right, Rob Wood, Madison County Prosecuting Attorney states this, Rachel Smith is an invaluable team member in the prosecution for the deaths of Tylee Ryan, JJ Vallow, and Tammy Daybell. Ms. Smith was an integral part of the team that secured the jury conviction of Lori Vallow Daybell in May, 2023 on all counts. Ms. Vallow Daybell is serving three consecutive life sentences without the possibility of parole. So true. Ms. Smith continues to add tremendous support as the team prepares for the trial against Chad Daybell in April of 2024. Between now and the end of February, Ms. Smith will assist with witness coordination, exhibit preparation, and other duties required to complete case preparation for trial. Jury selection begins on April 1, 2024 at the Ada County Courthouse. On behalf of Madison County, I want to express my deepest appreciation for the expertise Rachel Smith has contributed to our ability to seek justice for Tylee, JJ, and Tammy. Her commitment to justice for the victims has been extraordinary. That is a wonderful statement from Rob Wood expressing his gratitude uh, for, for Rachel Smith, but it doesn't tell us much, does it? It doesn't say, and by the way, uh, the elephant in the room is uh, why she's leaving. He doesn't share that in this statement. And, and Rachel Smith did not share in her statement either why. I don't know. But I will say that it's interesting to me. We all watched um, the latest hearing together. Remember the hearing where John Pryor decided to say he was leaving the Chad Daybell case. So So wasn't it just long ago that we thought that the that the defense attorney was leaving the case. Ironic now that it's the prosecuting attorney that's actually leaving the case. But, you know, a few weeks ago when we thought the defense was leaving the case, John Pryor, and, he, and there, a hearing was held to discuss this possibility, John Pryor did bring up uh, Rachel Smith. He didn't bring her up by name, but I'll kind of refresh your memory, or at least what I heard. This isn't verbatim. But John Pryor was arguing over many things. And one thing he brought up was complaints about what the state of Idaho and the county, the county is paying for an out-of-state attorney. So while he didn't, again, call Rachel Smith by name, as far as I recall, it was very clear who he was referring to. Rachel Smith is from Missouri. And he complained at the amount of prosecutors on the Daybell case. Do you guys remember that? I remember that. And I'll have to go back and look. This is breaking news. So I am not coming to you prepared. I'm coming to you with, whoa, what did we just learn? Let's talk about it. And here's a couple of statements for you from, from again, Madison County Prosecut Prosecuting Attorney Rob Wood and Rachel Smith herself, who is leaving the case. So I will have to go back. And if any of you want to go back and listen to that, I really do believe that he specifically brought up, we're talking about John Pryor here in his hearing. Uh, he was complaining, whining, arguing, whatever you want to call it, 
that there was an out-of-state attorney and that there was taxpayer dollars going towards that. And he complained that they had so many prosecuting attorneys. I also recall Judge Boyce sort of shutting him down and saying, like, dude, you know, we've asked you if you wanted co-counsel. Remember that? It it was sort of a part of the co-counsel arguing. Like, he was saying, I need co-counsel. And they're saying, well, you've had an option to have co-counsel. And he said, well, there are this many prosecutors and there is only one of me. I don't know if that has anything to do with this. Um, It seemed like Judge Boyce didn't really take any of that into consideration. I'm just bringing that up. I do not know the reason Rachel Smith is leaving. Um, And Judge, again, Judge Boyce didn't see any issue with the amount of prosecutors. He mostly kind of said to John Pryor, well, dude, like if you want co-counsel, get it. But that's the only thing I can think of is that that was sort of brought up this past month. And I'm wondering if someone's making a stink about it or I wonder if really just Rachel felt like her job was done and it was time and it was time for Rob Wood, you know, and and Lindsey Blake to take over um, and and do their best. And, you know, Lindsey Blake and Rob Wood did an excellent job as well at the Lori Vallow Daybell trial. I don't know. I'm going to take some moments to look at the chat now, see if you guys have any ideas. Oh, just logged on. Does this delay the trial? I don't believe so, but um, I will say that I saw a motion filed by somebody, uh, a request to have longer to um, get some... Let me see if I can't find it. Stay with me, guys. Let me pull up my Facebook page. This is called Breaking News, Dinner Live, Post Dinner Live, Evening Live. So I put it on our Hidden True Crime Facebook page, so that's where I'm going right now. Sorry for anyone that's car sick because of my phone. I'm on my laptop on my phone. So um, the motion, I'm going to assume that it is, come on, prior filing this motion because the prosecution seems to really want to push the trial forward for April 1st. Oh, look at that. It's already on here. It is John Pryor, you guys. Thank you, moderators. While I was at dinner, moderators posted this to the (laughs) true crime page. Breaking news as it happens. You guys are all like, Lauren, it's been on your page for four hours. Thank you to Stephanie May. All right. Um, So John Pryor, yes, has filed... Wow, a motion to extend time for expert disclosure and reports. This came today. Come now, Defendant John Pryor moves the court for an order extending the time for the defendant to disclose experts and expert opinions. Now, I will say he's not necessarily saying right here he wants to extend the time to trial. He's not saying I want to change the trial date. He's saying that he wants to move the court for an order extending the time for uh, the defense to disclose experts and expert opinions. So that's not to change the trial date. I think that's important to point out. That the court set a deadline for the disclosure of experts and expert opinions for January 31st, 2024. That the defense has provided our team of experts the discovery provided by the state in preparation for the upcoming trial and tomorrow's deadline. At approximately, again, this was filed, so to clear, this was filed Before January 31st, I put that on our Hidden True Crime Facebook page. That's what I was going to read to you. We couldn't see it until today, four hours ago. So he's writing this prior to January 31st, even though it's February 1st right now, if that makes sense. Um, At approximately 11.40 a.m. on January 30th, 2024, the state provided notice to the defense that it is supplementing their discovery response with additional evidence. Really? Really? Okay, I'm reading this along with you guys. You guys have probably read this before me again at dinner. This in itself is not the concern, as the state has an obligation to timely continue to supplement their discovery responses. However, this evidence at the time of this pleading has not been provided to the defense, that the state provided a listing on an addendum of the evidence and advised that the evidence would be overnighted to counsel by tomorrow. The defense has not viewed the evidence and in all likelihood would not be able to view the evidence in time to comply with the court orders, court's order of tomorrow on submission of experts and their respective reports. The evidence, at least in part, is scientific in nature. 
Hmm. And in other instances, seems to be reports from June of last year. This disclosure of evidence a day before the expert deadline is in the very least questionable as to timing. The fact that the, that the disclosure at least in part notes that it is scientific in nature concerns the defense that the state's disclosure creates in a situation in which the in which the defense experts have created their opinions and have not been afforded access to all the evidence in the possession of the state. The defense requires the court to set an expedited hearing to address this motion to extend the time. In addition, the defense may ask the court to either exclude the evidence or again seek another continuance of the trial to, defor- to afford our experts to have a fair opportunity to review this evidence in the state's possession. Interesting. Aunt Vicky is here. I see someone saying hi to Aunt Vicky. Okay, distracted. Squirrel, that was interesting. I just read that in real time with y'all. That was interesting. So again, John Pryor is not asking to push off the start of trial, but he is asking for... Uh, additional time for evidence. It is interesting that there was a deadline and on the 30th, allegedly, uh, according to John Pryor, the prosecution sent in uh, additional evidence, scientific evidence on the last day of the deadline. According to John Pryor, that is what happened. Uh, That is interesting. Defense requests an expedited hearing on this issue. Looks like we'll be having another Daybell hearing soon. I am very very curious to know more. If that is true, that they sent even additional scientific evidence the day before the deadline, I would like to know more about that. I hope you'll all join me for this hearing when it happens. Um, I love it. We have one comment on that post. Edie, that's hilarious. Sloppiest punctuation ever. (laughs) I laugh, but I'm pretty sloppy with um, my pronunciation. Or not pronunciation, punctuation. Both of them. I've been struggling with my pronunciation on this live too. Interesting. Wow. A lot's going on. A lot's going on. So I'm going to scroll the chat here a little bit. Aunt Vicky or Kay Woodcock, if either of you are here. um, There she is. Okay, Aunt Vicky. This is a statement from Vicky Hoban. She is Tammy Daybell's aunt. I am so thankful for her contribution, and I will be sad to see her go. She is truly a legal phenomenon. So in other words, um, thank you. Thank you for sharing that statement, Vicki Hoban. Vicki Hoban, again, uh, gave a, a witness um, impacts, or sorry, a, a victim impact statement. I'm struggling tonight, guys. Thanks for your patience. A victim impact statement uh, at the sentencing of Lori Vallow Daybell. She is Tammy Daybell's aunt, and when it comes to when it comes to Rachel Smith leaving the case, Vicki Hoban states how grateful she is for her contribution. It'll be sad to see her go. She truly is a legal phenomenon. I will also be. I, I you know I'm also sad to see her go. She was um, a familiar prosecuting attorney at the Lori Vallow Daybell case. They really did divide the work between those three: Rob Wood, Lindsay Blake, and Rachel Smith. Thank you for your statement, Vicki. And Kay, if she happens to be here, Kay Woodcock is oftentimes on our chats. If you happen to be here, please let us know. I'll scan a little bit. It's so good to see so many people's familiar names here. I'm finally scrolling and seeing everyone. Hello, hello. All right. My goodness. So I jumped on just shocked that Rachel Smith was leaving the case. I'm leaving shocked that we'll be having likely a motion uh, called by John Pryor to discuss new scientific evidence. I mean, I thought by now they would have all evidence, uh, all discovery, all discovery from the prosecution now delivered to John Pryor. So I'm, I'm very confused, but perhaps also it's something brand new. Some of this, especially if it's scientific, to give the prosecution the benefit of the doubt, if something is scientific, those things can often take a very, very long time. So if something was submitted to a lab and it just came back, it'll be interesting to know what this is. Or if they've just been holding scientific evidence, uh, discovery, 
and giving it the day before the deadline, that's interesting too. We'll find out. We'll find out. Um, people are asking for a recap. Here's your recap. Rachel Smith, prosecuting attorney on the Daybell case for nearly three years, three years this March. She will be leaving a month before Chad Daybell's trial begins. There's, there's your summary. That's, that's the lead. I read a statement from Rob Wood. I read a statement from Rachel Smith sent to Hidden True Crime. And uh, we read a statement from Vicki Hoban, Tammy Daybell's aunt. That, that is the meat of this for those that came late. And you can rewind and refresh for all the latest. I'm going to go uh, now eat dessert with my family. Promised my son that uh, before bed and go take my jacket off. So, all right, everyone, stay with us, stay with us. And if anyone else learns more, send us, send us your info to hidden true crime info at gmail.com. If anyone knows anything, if anybody has an inside scoop, because what we don't know yet is why she's leaving. And I know there's a reason. You don't leave a month before a case, in my opinion, before a trial. Sorry, you don't leave a, you don't leave a case a month before the trial. So if anybody has any insider information as to why this is happening, let us know. Let us know. Rachel Smith will be missed. All right. We'll see you guys. Plot, plot twist as always.